Nice lecture for today. Um, let us welcome Professor Fan. Thank you. And uh, now we have the inside of my stars and the colors of the, uh, these two pictures have, have been correct. <laughs> Uh, this morning I talked about uh, uh, using uh, DNA garden and particle conjugates to do uh, biodetection. Uh, and actually, it is also possible not to use uh, conjugates. Uh, but, uh, instead, we can explore interactions between DNA and garden and particles to do uh, DNA detection and other biological detection. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, golden nanoparticles are coated with a layer of uh, negatively charged citric ion. Uh, and the DNA is a highly negatively charged uh, uh, polyelectrolyte uh, because of its phosphate uh, backbone. <coughs> and as we can expect, uh, expect uh, DNA and uh, golden nanoparticles, uh, when they, need, uh, they exist, uh, Electrostatic uh, repulsion uh, between the two. So, if it's uh, double stranded DNA, if we add to a solution of uh, golden nanoparticles, uh, they cannot interact significantly. So, like in the, uh, in the presence, uh, in the absence of uh, DNA, uh, these golden uh, nanoparticles will be aggregated by sodium chloride uh, and turn this color to, uh, to, the, to the blue. However, uh, very interestingly, if we add a single-stranded DNA to the solution of uh, golden nanoparticles, uh, these, DNA, uh, these nanoparticles are not uh, uh, aggregated by sodium chloride. Uh, then why, uh, uh, maybe you can see from this picture, uh, DNA contains uh, ADTC, uh, the four bases, and all these bases, uh, they, uh, they have uh, nitrogen atoms, and the gold and the nitrogen have a, a relatively strong uh, absorption uh, strength. Um, so, in this case, uh, and in this case, um, in the single stranded DNA, ATTC are exposed, while in the double stranded DNA, uh, A binds to uh, T, G binds to C, uh, exposing its uh, phosphate backbone to the solution. So, ATTC are buried inside the backbone. Uh, they cannot interact directly with uh, golden nanoparticles. Uh, and another reason is that uh, DNA, uh, single-stranded DNA is very soft, so they can wrap at the, uh, the surface of golden nanoparticles. Uh, its persistence length is only one nanometer, while uh, double-stranded DNA is fairly rigid. Its uh, persistence length is about 50 nanometers, so they cannot wrap at the surface of golden nanoparticles. Is another reason that uh, the interaction between these two are uh, much, uh, much lower than, than, than this one. <coughs> so based on this uh, uh, interesting uh, interaction, uh, one may uh, be able to uh, detect the DNA, uh, uh, DNA molecules. Uh, this is golden nanoparticles. If we add a single strand DNA probe to the solution, uh, it's still red, just change the color a little bit. But if, uh, if there's a, a DNA target that can hybridize with the single-stranded DNA, it forms a uh, uh, rigid uh, double-stranded DNA structure, uh, then the color will be changed to blue because uh, the golden nanoparticles have been uh, aggregated by sodium, sodium, sodium chloride. <coughs> Um, and if you uh, remember uh, Aptimus, uh, which I mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, these Aptimus are DNA, but they function, uh, fun function like uh, antibodies, so they can bind to specific uh, targets like, uh, uh, like an an antibody antigen interaction. Uh, and if we combine Aptimus with uh, this interesting properties between DNA, uh, and golden nanoparticles, we can also do uh, a range of uh, biosensing detection. <coughs> uh, the basic idea is like this. Uh, again, uh, 
and, and a single-stranded uh, aptama DNA, yeah, a single-stranded DNA aptama, which is soft, it can wrap at the surface of garden and hard coast, so it's resistant to salt in this aggregation, and it's, it's red color. Uh, if it uh, binds to the target from this tertiary structure, it's rigid, it cannot bind to garden and hard coast, and it can be aggregated by salt to uh, uh, change the color to, to, the, uh, to the blue. <coughs> Uh, this is an example. Uh, we show that this uh, this DNA strand, uh, which contains many uh, guanine, uh, it can bind to uh, potassium very specifically and form this uh, structure uh, like this. So uh, uh, we expect that uh, if there's no potassium, uh, it, it will protect golden nanoparticles from the aggregate. But if, it's, uh, if, but if there's a um, potassium uh, ion, uh, it will form this structure and, 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 and no longer can protect the golden nanoparticles. And indeed, we can see that this is in water, so no, no uh, potassium is red. Um, but if, it, if there's potassium, uh, potassium ions, uh, it turns color to blue. But if it's sodium, it cannot bind to the aptima. Uh, it, it's just red, like in water. And this is a UV beta absorption spectroscopy, and we can see this uh, this one corresponds to the potassium one. And the SPR uh, absorption peak shifts to the red. And actually, this structure is uh, highly specific. Right? It only responds to potassium one, not to other ion metal ions like lithium, uh, magnesium, cadmium, uh, and so on. <coughs> Uh, this method can be uh, extended to the detection of other uh, metal ions, for example, mercury, uh, which uh, binds specifically to uh, T-rich uh, uh, T rich DNA strands and forms this structure. Again, uh, we can see the color change, uh, gradually change from red to blue, uh, along with the increase of uh, mercury uh, concentration. And this strand, uh, we call this i uh, it responds to a proton um, a pH values. So uh, again, we can see the, the difference uh, from, uh, from uh, red to blue. And uh, this pH titration curve, it just consistent with uh, uh, a CD spectra uh, determination. <coughs> Uh, this method is very simple, however, uh, it cannot be uh, used for uh, more complicated structures. Uh, for example, uh, this ATP aptama and this uh, uh, K-in aptama, uh, they, uh, they are more complicated than, than simple metal ions uh, aptamas. Uh, even in the absence of the <coughs> target, uh, uh, we can see that uh, this is in the absence of the target. It also contains a certain uh, secondary structure. So uh, it's also rigid. So gold nanoparticles just cannot distinguish between these two structures. <coughs> then how can we do uh, with these uh, structures? Uh, there's a method, uh, uh, displacement based, uh, based strategy. Uh, we can do it this way. Uh, we first hybridize uh, the aptama with its uh, complementary sequence, uh, not fully complement, not fully complementary. <coughs> this uh, this red one is a sh uh, little bit shorter than this uh, blue uh, aptama. So, uh, in the absence of uh, in the presence of the target, it will displace this uh, uh, complementary target uh, uh, sequence and release it to the solution. And now, uh, this one cannot bind to gold nanoparticles. While this one, uh, this single strand DNA, release the single strand DNA, it can bind to the gold nanoparticles. And the, uh, the concentration of this released one is just uh, equal uh, to, to this target uh, concentration. <coughs> the way this method we can detect, for example, uh, ATP with the ATP gap, you know, we first uh, 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 hybridize it with uh, its complement <coughs> sequence to uh, uh, thirteen and duplex, and then the color of, uh, color of gold nanoparticles is, is blue in the presence of salt. And if uh, if there is a displacement reaction, uh, the released one will uh, protect gold nanoparticles from the aggregate. 
I'm okay with that. Uh, still be red. <coughs> uh, and uh, these are the data. I mean, as we can see, this is uh, the duplex. If there is an ATT, it becomes a red line. Uh, while if it's an ATT uh, analog molecules, CTP, UTP, GTP, it's still blue. So this means that it, uh, this red is very uh, specific. And the, uh, this color, this shows the concentration profile. Uh, the, uh, the color just uh, goes from blue to red, uh, along with the uh, increase of ATP concentrations. And with this method, we can detect the uh, micromolar ATP simply with uh, uh, this color change. <coughs> and this method is also fairly generic. Uh, we can also detect a pain. Uh, ATP, uh, potassium, and the pH. Uh, so uh, all this shows uh, clear uh, red to blue or blue to red color change. <coughs> however, uh, however, we can also expect that uh, this method also has its uh, 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 disadvantage because uh, because of its uh, displacement uh, based uh, uh, sensing. So uh, the kinetics is usually uh, slow in, uh, because of the display, uh, because of the competition. Uh, it takes about uh, uh, half an hour to an hour to, uh, to finish a, a reaction. <coughs> so if we want to uh, have a mix and detect method to, uh, to do uh, detection, we have to change. <coughs> uh, then we uh, try to engineer uh, the optimal uh, with this, with this design, we can uh, first cut an abdomen uh, into two pieces, and we expect that uh, the target will glue these two uh, segments into the intact structure. And these two uh, short uh, segments will bind to golden particles and protect it from the abrid, while uh, this uh, intact structure will, uh, cannot bind to it, and it will turn, turn the color to blue. <coughs> And indeed, we, we, see that, uh, we can see that this cocaine uh, aptamer, uh, when, they, uh, when, when, when it, it was uh, cut into two pieces, uh, if there's no cocaine, uh, it binds to gold particles and it's, uh, it's red color. Uh, if, it's, uh, if there's cocaine, uh, it forms this uh, uh, structure and it will be blue. Uh, this is the data that we can see that uh, from uh, this cocaine. And uh, these are two similar molecules, but they cannot bind to the diaphragma, so they, re they retain and they are red colors. So uh, this assay is also very uh, specific. <coughs> and uh, we can also detect the uh, uh, micromolar uh, cocaine uh, in solution. <coughs> Uh, this method is also uh, applicable to other methods uh, like adenine, uh, potassium, and most importantly, uh, this method is very fast. Uh, the kinetics is very fast. All of these can be finished within five minutes, so uh, the kinetics is very so fast. <coughs> so this is really a mix and detect say. <coughs> but we still uh, are not satisfied with this, so say, uh, we have to. Uh, we wanted to further improve it. Uh, let's uh, let's see if we uh, went to uh, if we go to a uh, river side and we want to know if there's mercury in the river. Uh, then we want to have a portable device. Uh, then uh, we uh, get a drop of water from the river and uh, put it uh, put it into the uh, device, uh, and hopefully we can see the color change. Um, so we try to make this uh, kind of devices um, uh, by using microfluidics. Um, but usually microfluidics need uh, uh, pumps. And it's, so uh, the device itself is small, but pump is, is large. Uh, but with this uh, design, we can do a power-free microfluid, uh, the so-called power-free microfluidics, so that we can uh, have this very uh, small pieces of a PDMS chip, and we don't need a pump. Uh, <coughs> the principle is like this. Uh, PDMS uh, is a air permeable uh, plastic. Uh, so 
uh, it, uh, it, uh, it just means that it can store uh, air. Uh, if we de-guess a PDMS chip uh, with uh, this PDMS chip has it that has a micro channel, micro scale channels. <coughs> if we de-guess it, uh, all the all the air inside of the PDMS will be evacuated, and then we can put it into a vacuum uh, bag. Uh, then what, what do we want? Uh, and we have to seal this out of that uh, outlet. Uh, so when we want to use it, we just uh, open the bag and the, the PDMS chip will, uh, goes to the air. And in this case, uh, air will uh, go into the channel inst instantly, but its diffusion into the PDMS is uh, relatively slow. So <coughs> uh, if we put it uh, a uh, Water sample, a droplet of water into one inlet, and there's a nano, uh, nano probe in, in the other inlet. Uh, it seals all the three uh, in, uh, in, uh, two inlets and the outlets. Uh, and the only way uh, uh, for air molecules in the channel is to uh, diffuse into uh, PDMS uh, chip. So it forms a uh, air pressure difference between uh, the inlet and the outlet, and the uh, these two junctions uh, begin uh, begins to flow through the channel uh, to because of this uh, diff uh, pressure difference. And when these two um, uh, uh, junctions uh, uh, meet in the channel, uh, they form this. Uh, uh, we may see the color change because of the mercury induced. Uh, uh, color change or uh, aggregation of gold nanoparticles. And we can, uh, as we can see, uh, uh, this is a water uh, sample uh, containing mercury ions, while all, all the other channels do not contain um, mercury ions. Uh, so only this one has this depth of uh, And uh, this is the concentration profile. You can see that the more uh, the, uh, the more concentrated the mercury, uh, the higher the, uh, uh, we can see more clearly the, this line. Uh, this picture was taken on a microscope, uh, and we, don't, we still do not want to use microscope, so uh, an easier uh, way to do this is to use a uh, droplet of water put on the uh, surface of the PDMS chip, and it uh, magnifies the uh, channel just like um, uh, this lens, uh, and we can still clearly see this line. So this means that we can just use a piece of uh, PDMS chip uh, without using any external instrument, and we can see uh, if water, uh, if the river water was polluted by uh, mercury ions. <coughs> okay, uh, then I will uh, talk about the. Uh, the use of gold and particles as uh, fluorescent uh, quenchers. Uh, gold and particles uh, are usually not fluorescent, uh, not like uh, quantum dots, uh, but they are uh, excellent quenchers for fluorescence. <coughs> it is said that the quenching ability of uh, gold and particles are a uh, hundred times better than organic uh, quenchers. Uh, let's see this structure. If we, uh, let's assume we have a molecule uh, which is a dye, and it uh, uh, it has a sulfur at one end, and uh, with this gold sulfur uh, chemistry, we can assemble this molecule at the surface of gold nanoparticles. So the dye is uh, very close to the uh, gold nanoparticles. Then we can expect that gold nanoparticles will quench the fluorescence of, of this dye. <coughs> uh, we can also link the dye uh, and the gold nanoparticles by a strand of DNA, uh, and it depends on the uh, depending on the length of DNA molecules, we can tune the distance between the dye and the uh, gold nanoparticles. Uh, so. Uh, we can see clearly see the uh, fluorescent uh, decrease uh, as the as the length is shortened uh, from, for example, from here to here. Uh, so we can see uh, 
uh, when the lens is shut, uh, the fluorescence is high. If the lens is uh, uh, long, longer, the, the fluorescence is, uh, uh, decreases uh, to uh, nearly zero. <coughs> And uh, this interesting property of gold nanoparticles can be used for DNA detection as well. Uh, there's a very famous uh, molecular beacon sensor that has been widely used in, uh, bi in molecular biology. Uh, the usual molecular beacon uh, is composed of two dyes, one fluorescent dye and the other uh, organic dye. Uh, this design is very uh, clever. Uh, it Contain, uh, it, it is a composed of a DNA strand uh, that forms a stem, a stem loop structure. This means that uh, this loop region uh, is a detection region that, that is complementary to the target. While it, uh, at, at, at both ends, uh, there is a short piece of uh, DNA. They are uh, complementary, self-complementary. So, <coughs> These two parts will bind and uh, uh, turn this structure uh, uh, turns into this stem loop structure. Uh, here it forms a stem. Then, uh, 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 then this stem loop structure will bring uh, the uh, fluorescent dye to the close close proximity of the quencher. Uh, so uh, in this state, in a closed state, we cannot see any fluorescence. Uh, then, if there's a uh, molecule that's complementary to the uh, to the probe region, the loop region, uh, it will uh, bind to the, this loop and uh, form the uh, duplex. And because the loop is much longer than the stem, it will se separate the stem, and then uh, the quencher is far away from the uh, fluorophore, and then we can see the fluorescence. So this is also a, a very simple mix and detector. Uh, uh, sensor, we can uh, instantly see the uh, fluorescence if there's a specific target. Uh, then if we uh, replace this quencher uh, uh, with a golden nanoparticle, it is possible to significantly increase uh, uh, sensing performance. <coughs> so uh, in 2001, uh, this guy, he, they um, attach a stem loop structure to the surface of a golden nanoparticle. And uh, uh, again, in this case, uh, in the stem loop structure, uh, this dye is close to the surface and uh, the fluorescence is off. And it is expected that uh, if there's a target, uh, one will see the fluorescence. And indeed, uh, they, they made four probes, each with a different dye fluorescein, rhodamine, uh, texaran, uh, texaran, and sci-fi. And in all cases, they, uh, they, they see the significant uh, fluorescence increase uh, when they are in a specific target. <coughs> and because this is a uh, nanoprobe uh, with golden nanoparticles, uh, we ex uh, they ex expect to see uh, uh, this uh, improve of performance as compared to the conventional molecular uh, beacons. Uh, this is the conventional molecular beacon, uh, and this is the, uh, the nano, nano uh, particle beacon. <coughs> uh, this curve shows the uh, detection for uh, complementary sequences, and uh, this curve shows the detection for uh, single base mismatch one. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, the detection of single base mismatch is very important in biology. And you will see that uh, the difference between the two is much higher in this nano beacon than this molecular beacon. Uh, and you can see more clearly here this is a nano beacon. And uh, this, uh, this y axis uh, shows the ratio between the uh, complementary and single base mismatch one. So uh, the difference is much higher for this nano beacon than this molecular beacon. <coughs> Um, uh, they show that they can make four probes, uh, four different probes with different dyes. Uh, then we think, can we integrate uh, all these probes uh, with one nanoparticle? 
in their design, they use a one nanometer Gordian particles. So at one part, uh, at one particle, there's only one probe, so uh, they cannot do the integration. However, if we use a larger uh, nanoparticle, for example, 15 nanometers, then we can assemble different uh, DNA probes with different dyes at a single probe, single nanoparticle. So we expect that this uh, will be a multicolored nanobeacon. Uh, with one particle, we can detect multiple uh, DNA targets. Uh, and after a few tries, we have been uh, successful uh, to construct this uh, multicolor nano beacon. And uh, this is a kinetic study with, uh, which shows that uh, the response uh, is very fast. Uh, within uh, only a few minutes, we, uh, it has reached the maximum. And this is a single uh, base mismatch the target. The fluorescence intensity is much lower than the complementary one. <coughs> And this is the dynamic studies of this nano beacon. Uh, 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 this, uh, this black one, black curve shows uh, mm, uh, fluorescence of the beacon along with the temperature. Uh, as expected, uh, initially at room temperature, uh, it's uh, almost zero fluorescence. And it, the fluorescence will be increased along with the temperature because uh, at high temperature, the stem will be separated. Uh, DNA will be dehybridized. But interestingly, uh, for this, uh, <coughs> uh, if there's a complementary sequence, this red curve, uh, we can see that uh, there are three states. Uh, initially, uh, it's in the on state uh, because of the uh, presence of the target. So it opens the stem. Uh, then we see uh, high fluorescence. Uh, then when it goes to uh, around 50 centigrade, uh, the, uh, the duplex is separate. And uh, at this uh, uh, temperature, there are uh, still some uh, oligos, they can, oligo DNA, they can still self, uh, uh, self, uh, self complementary, they can still form uh, partial uh, stem structures, so there are uh, uh, a low uh, fluorescence, but if we further increase the uh, temperature, all these structures will be separated, uh, and, and then the, uh, the fluorescence uh, increased uh, a little bit. Uh, so uh, these are the three color detection for uh, three uh, DNA molecules. So that's uh, uh, in our design, we use three tumor genes. Uh, we can see the different uh, this is the color from the uh, film, this is the color from the rocks, and this is the color from uh, sci-fi, and they uh, respond specifically to the, uh, uh, to the target that we designed for this uh, time. <coughs> uh, I have talked all the time about the uh, DNA detection, but uh, golden nanoparticles can actually do uh, many other things, like uh, protein detection. Uh, I selected two examples. And the first one is for uh, phosphorylation detection. Phosphorylation is very important in signal transduction in, uh, in bodies. <coughs> and uh, people are uh, particularly interested in finding uh, inhibitors for kinase that do the phosphorylation, which, which are potential drugs. <coughs> so uh, one uh, uh, one can do the uh, detection by uh, assembly uh, by assembling a peptide uh, that has a sulfur uh, to the surface. Uh, this, part, uh, this peptide is a substrate for the kinase. Uh, that means uh, if there is a kinase, uh, it will uh, bring a phosphate uh, group to the uh, to the end of this uh, peptide, and if this uh, 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 this phosphate is from an, an ATP substrate, and if this ATP is, uh, has a biotin, lab, uh, biotin label, uh, the biotin will be also brought to the, uh, this peptide uh, and then to the surface of the crystalline particles. <coughs> uh, then uh, if we add uh, an molecule, uh, 
that, that is specific for the bi uh, biology, uh, then uh, this evening protein will aggregate the, uh, aggregate the golden nanoparticles into, uh, into this uh, uh, blue colored structure. But if there's no, uh, uh, if there is uh, uh, no kinase or if there is uh, uh, inhibitors uh, that inhibits the uh, uh, activity of kinase, uh, this, uh, uh, there, there will be no aggregation and we can still see the red color of God and the particles. Uh, this, uh, in, uh, this is the data which I basically show that initially God and the particles it has a uh, SPI by uh, 520. But if there is a, a kinase, it shifts the, uh, shifts the SPI a little bit to about 550. But if there is a, a inhibitor to this kinase, uh, uh, to this, this, uh, this curve is just like in the absence of uh, in the absence of kinase. <coughs> Uh, so uh, one can use this method to, to do drug screening uh, and this is a really high throughput method uh, and this is a visual method so uh, uh, that means the cost is very uh, inexpensive and the speed is very fast. <coughs> uh, one will also be able to use golden nanoparticles to probe the conformation of change of uh, proteins. Uh, this is a, a also, an example uh, showed that the conformation of cytochrome C, uh, which is a very important protein, uh, when it is coated at the surface of golden nanoparticles, uh, it will change the color of golden nanoparticles. Uh, in the absence of, uh, uh, without cytochrome C, uh, golden nanoparticles are, are stable in uh, pH values from 4 to 10. Uh, so they are uh, red colored, but if there is uh, cytochrome C, when, when it is coated to the particle, uh, at acidic pH, uh, cytochrome C is unfolded, and then the nanoparticle will be aggregated because of unfolding of uh, cytochrome C. And then the color will be uh, blue, and the, uh, if it stays a sufficiently long time, uh, the aggregate will precipitate, and it that there will be no color. <coughs> uh, so this shows the uh, uh, difference between uh, the pH profile uh, uh, from, uh, from the acidic pH and to the uh, alkaline pH. And uh, actually, uh, one can even uh, reverse the process uh, to the to pH 10 and then reverse to P pH, uh, pH, 4, pH 4 and then to pH 10, pH 4. Uh, so this folding and unfolding at the surface uh, is reversible. So uh, one can use this method to uh, uh, monitor the conformation of change of cytochrome C. <coughs> uh, I will also show uh, other examples uh, that uh, golden particles will be uh, very useful in biology. Uh, this is a, an example that uh, golden nanoparticles helps PCR. Uh, I have sh uh, shown that PCR is a very important method in biology to do molecular diagnostics. But PCR has its, uh, 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 it also has its shortcomings. Uh, the specificity of PCR uh, is uh, relatively poor. But if there is, uh, as, as we can see from this electrophoretic pattern, uh, there are many uh, Bands, as a smearing band, this means non-specific uh, DNA application occurs. But if we add golden nanoparticles to, to this PCR system, uh, we can see that along with the increase of the golden uh, nanoparticles concentration, uh, the smearing band reduced and uh, at the specific uh, at 0.8 nanomole golden nanoparticles, we, we can obtain a very specific uh, PCR application product. So this improves the, uh, improves the specificity of, golden, uh, of PCR uh, reactions. And the golden nanoparticles can also be used as a nanobullets to treat cancer. This is based on its uh, uh, property that uh, if, we, uh, if there is an uh, 
uh, laser shine on the gold nanoparticles, uh, it can absorb the uh, light to, and turn it to the thermal uh, uh, to, to the heat, and this heat can just uh, kill the kill, uh, kill cancers. So <coughs> we may uh, coat gold nanoparticles uh, with a with an antibody, and then if we are target the specific cancer cell, uh, then if if there is a uh, near infrared laser. Uh, it can penetrate the tissues, uh, then the, uh, the energy is absorbed by this uh, golden nano, uh, nano, nano particle, and then it will heat up. While uh, the, then uh, the cancer cell will be killed. So this, this is like a bullet for uh, that is best for the cancer. Uh, this is an example uh, showing that. Uh, Golden nanoparticle uh, can be used as a drug carrier. So uh, uh, this specific drug, Paxil, uh, uh, can be assembled at the surface of golden nanoparticles to form a nanomedicine, and it can be uh, uh, specifically transported to uh, to a tissue so that it can it can kill uh, kill cancer cells. And this example shows that. Golden nanoparticles can be used as a contrast agent. Uh, in this X ray imaging, uh, it's not very clear, but if we use golden nanoparticles as a uh, contrast agent, we can clearly see kidney. Uh, so, uh, this is very important for uh, X ray imaging. <coughs> um, I have shown many examples, but still, there are uh, so many uh, applications of golden nanoparticles in biology. Uh, and I believe, uh, and actually many scientists believe, there are still a uh, vast number of golden mines in the nano world. So I think this world, these worlds are still valued in the nano world, a rush for gold. Thank you. Are there some questions? Question? Yes, please. So, you agree with me that uh, the biological application of gold nanoparticles is a fiction because we don't know how to take, take out the nanoparticles from the body after this treatment. Okay, uh, I'm not like one of those. Gold nanoparticles uh, have been well uh, known to be far compatible. So, uh, that means it's not harmful to the body. So, not harmful to the body. Uh, yeah, and it can be, uh, eventually, it will be uh, out of the body because, uh, like, like uh, actually, uh, in ancient times, uh, some people uh, they even drink government uh, particles as a medicine. So, in the case of pulp materials, it's okay. But we don't know the, because the nanoparticles are, have different proper, different uh, properties yes. because they have surface characteristics. They act differently to the human body. Yeah, different uh, nanoparticles uh, have different effects. So that's why the safety issue of nanomaterials have uh, uh, have been uh, 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 many messages are working on that. But for because uh, the golden nanoparticles, most people believe that it is safe enough. Are there more questions? Yes, please. Uh, in the application of golden nanoparticles uh, as uh, a drug carrier, how to release the drug when, you, when the golden particle can uh, attack the cell? Uh, it's a good question, uh, but uh, in this case, uh, in this case, I think this drug uh, is still functional when it binds to the golden particle, so it's not necessary to release it. Uh, but in some other cases, uh, uh, they use a different way. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the linkage between the drug and the and, and the golden uh, particle is, uh, for example, photosensitive. So we may shine a light, uh, then it will be released.
More questions? Uh, well, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, let us thank uh, Professor Fan again. And we